So what is physics? All of us know it's a knowledge of nature. It's a natural science that involves study of matter and motion through space and time along with related concepts of energy and force. Okay, more broadly, it is a general analysis of nature conducted in order to understand how the universe behaves. So we have different branches like mechanics, thermodynamics, electromagnetism, photonics, relativity, atomic and nuclear physics. So the importance of physics goes in studying of parallel universes, warm holes, twin paradox, teleportation, gadgets, quantum um, computers, navigations, whatnot. So what is so special about a resource person? Just a few words about a uh, resource person. So their ability to present abstract concepts in a way that can be easily interpreted, interpreted and understood. A willingness to engage students on the journey to understanding phenomena in a mathematical way. A resilience and a belief that students will understand a concept at some point after having explained it in multiple different ways. So their subject knowledge, their good communications and explanation skills, providing contest and making physics relevant, understanding the challenges students face. They are enthusiastic. They show love for physics and they have got, uh, so what amount of passion you will be getting through. Uh, the, the future sessions you will lay, you, that's obvious. And they are engaging whatever class they take, they are, it is highly engaging. Once again, namaste to all. So my talk, now my topic is motion in one and two dimension. So these are the chapters uh, in uh, kinematics. So I'll be uh, taking some of the topics which are um, which are a little uh, challenging. I would like you to know. I like to know from the uh, participants which topic do you find it difficult to teach or it's difficult to reach the children. Can anybody tell? Please be interactive teachers. You're all uh, experienced teachers. You should know um, what are the topics which require lots of explanation and uh, which uh, require different methods of approach. Um. Students are difficult to understand the variation between instantaneous velocity, average velocity, that variation. Variation. Okay, very good. Yes. Sir. And uh, then graphical. 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 Yes. That's what I want to deal in detail today. Graphical representation of motion where uh, students have difficulty to draw graph from the data and uh, uh, inference, draw inference from the graph. Thank you. Thank you, Anuja. Okay, uh, I have listed learning outcomes for 50% of the content. I would like, I'm going to give us an assignment uh, for you to uh, list the learning outcomes for two dimensional motion. Is it okay? This is for one dimensional motion. For two dimensional motion, I would like you to list the learning outcomes and post to me. Okay, so now, um, See, at the end of this lesson, students should be able to explain the meaning of all the new terms. I think uh, uh, Rajeshwari ma'am, in her uh, video, she has uh, introduced all the new terms like velocity, acceleration, displacement, dis uh, distance, so many new terms we are going to introduce and uh, draw, analyze and interpret position time, displacement time, velocity time and acceleration time graphs. Where appropriate, they should be able to relate those graphs uh, one to another and to equations. So mathematically, uh, we frame equation and then we have to relate or draw the corresponding graphs. Solve simple problems involving uniform motion and uniformly accelerated motion by using appropriate equations. Now, before uh, starting the motion lesson, we need a frame of reference. So a frame of reference should have an origin. So what is an origin? What do you think Initial is origin? Point. Starting point. It may be a, a starting, starting point. point. Initial point. Okay. But uh, comparing uh, the frame of reference, uh, for example, if you are comparing with the uh, motion uh, one person to another person, means their frame of reference. Uh, or if you are comparing with the earth and our elements, there is reference is different. Very good. Very good. So now, is it uh, necessary that uh, uh, 
when we fix the origin at t is equal to zero, or we fix the origin as uh, when the time is zero, or uh, the case when we observe the motion, can we fix the origin when we start observing the motion? That uh, I can I tell like uh, uh, origin is the time when we open our eye and see the and see the uh, when uh, when we start observing the motion. Whenever we start observing the motion, that point becomes the origin. When we when we start, the body may be traveling. The body may be traveling, but when we start observing the motion, at that instant, I put the time origin as zero. At t is equal to zero, it can be at hundred meter. So origin of time and origin of position need not coincide. It is a reference. So you have to fix origin for the time as well as origin for position. So whenever I start observing the motion, that is the origin. And whatever observation I take, and is it necessary that positive side should be to the right of origin and negative side to be to the left of origin? Is it necessary? Yes, ma'am. So what I want to tell you is that suppose if I take this is origin, and if I go on position like this if should i take this as positive and this as negative yes ma'am this point is correct ma'am because I thought this is one know. method this is one method what i assign see sign convention are what we assign i can even take left hand side as positive and right hand side as negative nothing wrong in that so sign conventions are for our convenience so we can assign uh, suppose we fix this is positive, this direction towards the right of origin is positive, left of negative, uh, origin is negative. Throughout my problem solving, throughout my discussion, I should hold on it till the end of the problem. Till I solve the problem, I should, for uh, all the uh, steps, I have to follow the same sign convention. Okay. So now you are going to introduce the topic motion to the children. So I will introduce a topic. So there are um, different type of motion. What are the different type of motion? One dimensional motion. What is the difference between three types of motion? One dimensional, two dimensional, and three dimensional. One dimensional, it indicates only one direction. Plane, if we consider the plane, means it is two dimensions. Okay. Space. So if you want to specify the position of a particle, position of an object in one dimensional motion. Only one of its coordinate will change, either x coordinate or y coordinate or z coordinate. Whereas in the case of two dimensional motion, x, y, as the ball y, is moving, uh, yeah, two coordinates out of three will change, isn't it? So when the ball is moving, it's x coordinate and y coordinate. Suppose if I assign this as x, this as y, its x and y coordinate will change with time. In the case of three dimensional motion, suppose a three dimensional box here, and if the butterfly is flying here. So as it is moving, its x coordinate will change, y coordinate will change, and z coordinate will change. So number of coordinates required to specify the position of any object is only according to that we define motion as one, two, or three dimension. So now we always um, uh, before that um, did they, uh, did you try any new method when you teach motion uh, yes, lesson? About, I you, was about to ask him. Uh, did I you try any new method when you, whenever you, you are? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Do, uh, do you define? You do you define motion? Motion is a uh, change in position. Yeah. Do you define like this, and you define what is velocity, what is speed, what is acceleration. Straight away, do you define or you, you give some illustration? What type of illustration you give? How do you like, introduce the topic? Like we travel in a bus, ma'am. Ah, uh, yes. So Very I am good. myself. I will be addressed uh, when I uh, compare my reference to the co-passenger inside the bus. But I, when I compare to the place where I have started, I start moving. So I start with the daily uh, scenario. Whatever we uh, do daily, we compare that way. So one dimension, two dimension, three dimensions. Like usually we have ants during the summer. So when our ants move along the wall, it is one dimension. When it comes to the floor, it becomes two dimension. The same ant, if it has a wing, when it flies, it becomes three dimension. So that is what we uh, start very. with. Uh, very yeah. good, very good. Okay, what about very the good. teachers over there? Like, you know, how do you introduce this? How do you introduce one, two, and three? 
any different ways that you introduce it in yes ma'am yes ma yes sir yes sir yes, 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 you would like to hear from just take a, a balloon huh? and release in the open room it it comes under three dimensional object very good Super. okay fine and Then, uh, uh, one room is defined into one dimension two two dimension three dimension as you already told like uh, if we consider a uh, one what we called one brick combination that is one dimension if we consider the wall that is two dimension as all together room that comes under three dimension is it okay ma'am yes yeah fine i actually so, teach what? with i actually teach with a blackboard blackboard yeah. becomes a plane i say there's an ant as a Yes. You no, know, uh, and just moving along the length of the board or the breadth of the board. Yes. Then I ask them to draw the x and y axis along the board. That children are very. Uh, I mean, it's not new to them. That mathematical is not new to them. And when they do that, and when I ask them uh, how many coordinates does x change, does y change, or both x and y changes, then I've introduced the chapter to them. Then uh, one more thing, I just wanted to. Pascal, suppose I make the ant move on the board uh, diagonally. Is it one dimension or two dimensions? It's two dimensional. Dimension. Diagonal. Two dimensional. Suppose it's moving on a straight line. Can it make? Can I make it one dimensional? Yes. How do I make it one dimensional? Exactly. The direction of the x-axis or in the direction of the y-axis. It's uh, so moving I in can, a one-dimensional plane, but only one coordinate changes. So I could, like you know, what the idea that we should give them is, like you know, we have to first fix the coordinate axis and then talk about their uh, motion, whether it's one-dimensional or two-dimensional. The first thing, as Vasmi Ma'am was indicating, the very first thing that you do before you even talk about the types of motions, teach them. that they should fix their axis coordinate axis or their frame of reference and even some other teacher was saying it depends on even raji ma'am was saying like you know the first one it being described as one dimensional or two dimensional or three dimensional depends on how we have fixed the frame of reference yes. or with respect to which frame of reference we are talking about that motion now because some yes uh, you can yeah, yeah, here uh, i have kept a dot here dot or a ball Okay, the ball is in x y plane. Uh, can I uh, and it is moving this way. You can see the arrow mark straight. What type of motion it is? What type of motion? Is it a one dimensional motion or two dimensional motion? Pictures. It's one dimensional. Friends. It's one dimensional one because time. only x coordinate is changing. No, suppose if I take this as say. So y is constant, x alone moving one dimension. Yeah, y is constant, x alone. So See, it's constant. suppose this one I take it as say two, but here in this position it becomes three, three two, two two, and here somewhere here it may be four two. So only x coordinate is changing with time. That's why though it is moving in a plane, its x coordinate is changing, y coordinate or z coordinate. It also has z coordinate. It also has some z coordinate that is also that is not changing with time. can we proceed to the next concept yes ma'am yes yes okay. yes ma'am okay very well so now how do you uh, usually uh, we have so many diagrams all this diagram we cannot draw isn't it distance displacement so a cycle is starting from here and um, uh, this is the initial position let us say this is a final position you know that displacement is a shortest distance you can also talk about vectors because displacement is a shortest distance between the initial and the final point in the final specific direction so distance is more than the displacement distance is a total path length all that you say traveled by the object okay, okay. shall we is there any other definition any other method any other method of teaching all the i'm 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 not only distance displacement speed velocity acceleration everything is there any other simple method where we can easily teach this concept can we take the children to playground where there are tracks say 100 meter dash Okay, so you can teach about origin. Oh. You can take. Uh, you can uh, teach about origin. So here, distance in a straight line motion. When a hundred meter dash, there is no 
uh, it's only a straight line, tra straight uh, line, isn't it? Most of the 100 meter yeah. dash, there is no uh, circular track, straight. Uh, 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 the athlete runs from one point to another. So what is the relation between distance and displacement? Same, is it not? So during the sports day, whenever you take, in, take the children to uh, some uh, uh, say playground, you can teach speed, velocity, you can calculate the speed of different players because they reach the destination at different time. Speed is equal to velocity in 100 meter dash. And then if there is a 400 meter, 400 meter race. So you can uh, tell that this uh, average velocity is zero. Why? In the 400 meter, when a play, when an athlete is running on a circular track, his average velocity is zero. Why? Because the starting and the ending point. And initial points are same. So he's going to come back to the initial position after four rounds or four rounds, isn't it? So average yes. velocity is zero. Whereas his speed is we can calculate the speed. So time is calculated. So you can we can easily calculate the speed. So what about acceleration? How do you teach acceleration? How do you teach acceleration? Retardation. Yes, from change in the speed and the change in the velocity. So you define velocity. Uh, you just tell the students, uh, uh, take children, uh, acceleration is defined as rate of change of velocity. No you define like that? Um, you not give any illustration for that? Like we start, take a bike. Initially, bike. we start, it is addressed. After some time, we start with the moving gear. Then we put a second gear, third gear. So if it is ah, a very city, good. yes, yes. Suppose so it is a highway, all it is fine. Uh, Very good. In the fourth gear, suddenly a buffalo comes in between. We see uh, some uh, herd of buffalo coming in on the national highway. So we need to, uh, there is a reaction time yeah. and we need to yes. slow down. So that happens in a national highway. But in uh, in our city, you know, it is more uh, ups and downs. We Some roads are less, have less traffic and some more uh, roads are more traffic. So yeah. uh, we, uh, we uh, yes. change our gears, uh, gears too often. So here it's a, yeah, yeah, yes, Rajeshwari ma'am. Thank you so much. Yeah, you, whenever you teach acceleration, no, just uh, tell the children, let them, uh, let them imagine that they are traveling in a van or a car or a bus on a busy road. Okay. So uh, they cannot, they cannot maintain uniform motion at all. First of all, uniform motion is, what is uniform motion? What is and uniform motion? Equal distance at equal. Uh, if a body cover equal distance in equal interval of time. time. However small. That's all. In a straight However line. Small the, the However small the interval may be in a straight line. In the same direction. When in a straight line. So in the same direction. In the same direction. direction. So That's it is not possible important. for a person to travel on a road with uniform motion. Even if he is, uh, if he is. Uh, uh, maintaining equal distance in equal interval of time, he may not be able to travel in a straight line. So here itself, while turning, is there any acceleration while turning? Direction is changing. No direction is changing. Direction is changing. He may not, uh, he may not change the speed, but direction of motion is changing. So there is an acceleration. Okay, you can give. These are all experiential learning. Students should experience. So first of all, don't give the definition at all. Don't give the definition, give some illustration, give so many examples, do some simple experiment before concluding or before framing the definition. Ask the children to frame the definition. Ma'am, can the children I just, to frame the definition. Yeah. Can, I, can I just ask them one thing, like definition of displacement uh, teachers. How do you define displacement? Teachers. The shortest. We gender Ah, generally, we give the statement as the shortest distance between the initial and the and final, final position. position. Now, at 11th Hello. standard, we are going huh? to do with vectors, right? A yes. lot of vector notation is going to come, we are going to bring. So, displacement, do you ever define it as change in position? The Have you ever tried it? Ah. So direction. Ever, ah. Along a particular direction, in a particular time. Only then you can bring in vectors. It's a vector. In a particular direction. Yes, ma'am. Please proceed. So another example of... Adam, you want to tell something? Shall I continue? Yeah, 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. Now, shall we want the graphical representation of motion? Yes. Yes. Do you? How do? You, how do you? Uh, how do you introduce the graphical representation of motion? Do you straight away uh, draw the graph like uh, say uh, for uniform motion? Um, position versus time is a straight line and uh, velocity versus time is a line parallel to x-axis acceleration versus time there is no acceleration zero do you do you teach like this what is missing here can i can i afford to teach like this i'm wrong if i teach like this why am i wrong is it correct all the data are correct but i am wrong if i deliver the idea like this why am I wrong? It has to be with the SI units, ma'am. Oh, SI okay, unit? Ma okay, I'm writing SI unit, even then. Should a graph be taught like this? Or what is another better way of making them understand the graphs? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. So, should we, should I give that? This is, I, I feel that it is a conclusion. I should not draw into conclusion. Have Without a table. giving any logical thing behind it. So, what are the logical steps in order to arrive at the conclusion? This is a conclusion. What is the, what is the relation between x and y physical quantities? So, we can give that uh, equations. Should I not give the data? It would be very good if we give a data. data. Should I not and give the data like this? And then ask them to plot the graph. Let them plot the graph. Let them arrive at a C here. If they plot the graph, time, distance, what type of graph they will get? I have not plotted the graph. So, equal time interval, equal distance. Shall I, will they not get a straight line graph? Okay. So, if the graph is graph of x versus time is a straight line, then they will they not conclude this as a uniform motion. For uniform motion, I should get a graph like this. They will experience that, isn't it? Either it can start this way. It's not necessary that a t is equal to zero, x should be zero. It can it can even be at some distance from the origin, or it can be like this too. So whatever it is, according to the data, they will plot the graph and they will draw conclusion. And this is velocity time graph. So I may get a graph straight line. Sorry. <laughs> So here, this is position versus time graph. I may get a graph like this. Velocity time graph. Will I get like this for this? For the data given time distance, I may get a graph this way. What type of graph will I get for velocity time? What is the velocity here? What is the velocity? I think it is um, 100 meter per second, isn't it? I think it is 100 meter per second, is it not? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, 100 meter per second. So here, I'm going to get a value of 100 meter per second for, for all time. For all time. 5, 10. So now I'm getting a graph for uniform motion. So they will draw two type of graph here. One is XT graph and velocity time graph. XT graph, from the uh, slope of the XT graph, you must have taught them how to find the velocity. So velocity is same at all times. So for uniform motion, velocity time graph is a straight line parallel to the time axis. Okay, this is one type of graph. So you just have to give the data. They have to plot the XT graph and velocity time gra graph and draw the conclusion. Now, so velocity versus time, you are getting a straight line. So is velocity constant? You should ask the children. Is velocity constant? So what is the conclusion they draw from the data? There is an equal change in velocity in equal interval of time. So velocity is increasing. So the body is accelerated. So what type, what, uh, what are the other data they can get from the velocity graph here, velocity time graph? What they can find? They can find the slope. They can find slope of the graph and they can find acceleration. Acceleration. Do you think action. children in 11 standard know what is slope of a line? Oh, they don't. You'll have to teach, 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 teach
you have to take them out to find this yeah we'll have to slightly recall actually you can bring in their max they remember max very easily generally when i ask the question what is the slope how do you find the slope from a graph line they're able to give it to us as y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 that's common slope and then standard no yeah so they, they would have slope. done in yeah, the house now doing, no? exactly they yeah. are doing slope in their 10th standard math even earlier to that they are doing teachers even yeah. earlier to that they do so maybe if you can connect that to this then ask them what yes. is y2 Well, this is the first lesson they are learning but yeah. then mathematical concept you have to tell them you have to what introduce them to exactly. mathematical law what is mathematical concept like slowly you have to introduce maybe you can simplify differentiation and integration and tell them not uh, uh, the way the max teacher do but we can always explain them because uh, when you are teaching instantaneous velocity necessarily we have to bring in some calculus uh, simplify that and give it to the children they definitely they will take it Yes. So always don't give the conclusion part first. Give lots of explanation. Give lots of uh, background material before arriving at the conclusion. And don't define anything first. Definition should be uh, drawn, or it should be a conclusion drawn at the end of uh, at the end of uh, logical uh, explanation. Okay. So you can differentiate. So now. you can also give a, see actually this is a uniformly accelerated motion you can also give a data uh, distance time position time uh, data for uniformly accelerated motion and uh, ask them to compare the um, compare uniform motion and non uniform motion what how how is the position time graph or distance time graph for uniform speed and non uniform speed and one more thing Uh, students usually get confused by such graph so here velocity time graph and position time graph what is the striking difference between the two both of them the lines appear parallel to the time axis how do you uh, if, if you ask the children uh, what is the difference between a graph x and y what type of motion does a x graph indicate what type of motion does the y graph indicate what type of motion Cos graph uh, x y is at rest, ma'am. Y graph. Y graph. Velocity object. time graph uniform. Velocity at rest stationary, ma'am. Velocity is constant. Constant. Velocity is constant. constant. Velocity yeah, is constant. constant. The object is moving, but oh, velocity yeah. is not changing. Parallel. Whereas here the position is not changing here. So here velocity is zero. Object is at rest. Object is at rest. Y graph indicate object at rest at a particular position. Whereas X graph indicate the object moving with constant velocity. Constant velocity. Please introduce such type of graph where there is contradiction. And now uh, accelerate. I am concluding here, but don't give the conclusion. is there already i have written accelerating decelerating so how do they conclude that uh, just by position time graph uh, how do they conclude that this graph a represent accelerated motion and graph b represent decelerating motion first graph i have explained to here you can always find the average uh, velocity is it average velocity i think data here there is a mistake in the graph is that no no correct only so you can see that see the correct correct this is a distance in a equal interval of time the distance traveled here so if you consider this this is a distance traveled in this time there is equal interval inter equal interval of time the distance traveled is going on increasing so if you consider this portion this portion the distance traveled is more than uh the distance traveled in the first one second this next one second the distance traveled is more between third and fourth the distance traveled is much more okay so now this represent accelerated motion where velocity is going on increasing so you must have uh, so in the case of curved graph how do they find the velocity how to find out we can only find the average velocity 
So only when the object is moving in a straight line, xt graph, the average velocity will be same as instantaneous velocity. Whereas here, um, we, we, we average as x2 minus del x by del t. Del x by del t. This is average velocity. Average velocity is going on increasing at equal interval of time. So we can conclude that it's accelerating. So in this graph itself, we can teach them how to find out velocity, instantaneous velocity. You have to draw a tangent. I think you all do that. And then find the slope of the tangent. Because you know that del x limit, del x tending to zero, del t tending to zero of del x by del t is dx by dt. That is only instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous. We take the time interval to be very small. We introduce calculus here and we use some formula to calculate the instantaneous velocity. So average velocity becomes instantaneous velocity when the time interval becomes very, very small. Very, very small. Very, very small, tending to zero. So in the case of uh, motion, where position time graph? See, uh, suppose uh, two graphs are given and uh, one is inclined like this, another is inclined like this. How to make the children differentiate between the two types of graphs? They have to necessarily find out the slope. Slope of the graph here, slope of the graph here, at these points, definitely the slope will be the second graph. Sorry. See that. If you take a tangent here, for the same time interval, the displacement is going on decreasing here. So it is, as time increases, for the same time interval I'm taking, I'm finding the average velocity del x by del t. Del x by del t is not same for this point, not A, B, C. Am I? Is it not? For z, it is the least. For the point c, it is the least. So this way, give contrasting graph and ask them to differentiate between different type of motion, accelerating, decelerating. So finally, you conclude. See, there are different types of position time graph. So object at rest. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. It's not audible. Yeah, yeah. I'm not moving. You're able to get the cursor. I don't know why. Yeah. So these are different type of position time graph. Slope is positive, slope is negative, and slope velocity is not constant. Slope at different point is different for the fourth graph. And um, see, it is also uh, our uh, uh, responsibility to relate the mathematical equation with the type of graph, type of graph. Uh -huh. So y is equal to half a t square. So I think you should get a parabola, isn't it? So a little, uh, uh, see, mathematics is a tool to understand physics, is it not? So we should connect mathematical equation with a graph. So v is equal to a t. So where v is equal to a t, if you plot a graph between time and velocity, you're getting a straight line. So where a becomes a constant, a is the slope of the graph, isn't it? A is the slope of the graph. So let me, okay. An acceleration time graph for uniformly accelerated motion is a constant. You get a, a graph which is parallel to the time axis. Okay, so uh, A is a constant. There is no slope for that. Slope is zero. Slope is constant here. And here slope is varying. And corresponding equation. So to relate the uh, equation with the graph. So, so you can some after uh, completing all the graph, ask the children to have compare position time graph 
velocity time graph and acceleration time graph. So at rest, x is constant, velocity is zero, acceleration is zero. So motion with constant velocity, you get a graph. Constant velocity, xt graph is a straight line. Velocity time graph is a graph parallel to the time axis and uh, uh, there is no acceleration. So acceleration will coincide with the acceleration line will coincide with the zero. Motion with constant acceleration, you get a graph like this, xt graph is a parabola and uh, uh, velocity time graph is a straight line, acceleration is constant. So in this case, deceleration, see the difference between velocity time graph is an acceleration, slope is positive, your slope is negative, negative, negative slope. Why negative slope? As time increases, uh, velocity decreases. Fine. And acceleration, is there anything wrong in this part of the graph? Is there anything wrong here? I feel there is something wrong here. My cursor is moving here, no? What is wrong here? Uh, zero have to come. Huh? Should the acceleration be on the negative axis? Is it not? This is time and A. A is positive, fine. But here, when it is decelerating, should, I, should the acceleration be below the zero axis? Isn't it? So don't go by the... So uh, you should also check, whenever you are taking information from net, you should check the validity of the information. It's very, very important. The acceleration is not it's constant, but it is negative. So if you are taking this as zero time axis, it should be below. The acceleration should be negative. This is negative. Okay. It's a textbook question. All of you know the thing. So such type of graph should be given to the children. Which one of these graphs cannot possibly represent one dimensional motion of a particle? According to this, I am having one point here, another point here. At a given instant of time, can the body be at two positions? At a, at a given time. Say, let us say it is two seconds. At two seconds, it is at x1. At the instant two seconds, the same particle, same particle is at x2. Is it possible? Is it possible? I want uh, answer from the participants, please. No, ma'am, it is not possible. Not possible. Similarly here, it is a velocity time graph. Same, same logic apply here. Is it possible for a body to have at a given instant of time, is it possible for a body to have two velocities? V1 and V2, one positive, another negative? No. Isn't it? And I'm, no, I would like all of you to no. switch on your video, please. There are only few participants. And uh, can this, it's a speed versus time graph. We know that speed is what is the difference between speed and velocity? We all of us know. So, children will immediately answer that speed cannot be negative. Is it? If speed is rate of change of distance. Rate of change of distance traveled. So, distance is always positive. Distance traveled is always positive. So, speed cannot be negative. So, this graph is also not positive. So, can total path length... Suppose an object is starting from A... You should give such explanation to the children and then it is traveling like this and it is arriving at B. So as time increases, its path length can, it will always increase 5, 5 meter, 10 meter, 15 meter, 20 meter, 30 meter. So it has traveled a distance of 50 meter. So as time increases, the path length will increase. So it is increasing, it is coming to zero and then it cannot. So uh, total path length is actual distance travel. So though it can it can even travel in a zigzag way path. So it can uh, the object can even travel in a dis, the zigzag way. It is starting from A and it is re reaching here C. So 10 meter, again 10 meter, again 10 meter. So it is not a position time graph. It is only the path length. So path length go on increases only. It can never be decrease and then it can never decrease. Path length can never decrease. But according to the graph it is decreasing it's not possible. So studying the graph and drawing inference from the graph is very, very important. So all these graphs cannot represent one dimensional motion. Are you convinced? Yes, ma'am. 
Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma so this is a displacement. See, ask the children whenever they see the graph. It's very important that they watch. The, they uh, record the x-axis and y-axis. What is given on y-axis? What is given on x-axis? They should record that first. Which part of the graph has negative acceleration? Negative velocity, not acceleration. Negative velocity. D e. and E. D and E. D e. E. The portion? Yes. D E. Or retardation. Yeah, correct only. It is correct. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Negative acceleration. or acceleration or retardation. Retardation. Can I post a question? Ma'am, if you allow, can I post a question to them? Yeah. Uh, teachers. Yes, ma'am. Uh, deceleration, we say, is negative. It takes a negative sign always because the velocity, velocity decreases with time or the body. If we can take an example, the body just slows down, right? The object slows down, so it is negative. Uh, what I want to know is, is all negative acceleration deceleration? Got my question? Yes, yes. Not always. Huh? Is negative acceleration always deceleration? Not always. Freely falling bodies. Uh, not, not always, ma'am. Not yeah. always. Not, not always. Not always. Oh, deceleration one... is only slowing down. Right. Negative acceleration now. Uh, Changes the direction. So now, uh, ball is thrown vertically upward. Which of the following graph represent velocity time graph of the ball during its flight? So ball is thrown vertically upwards. So what happens when a body is thrown vertically upwards? You are throwing with some initial velocity, isn't it? Velocity decreases. Velocity decreases. Velocity decreases, yes. then it reaches the highest point. Then what will happen? Velocity becomes zero. Velocity, zero. Velocity, velocity increases. But we have to zero. see. We have to teach them sign convention. Yes. yes. We have yes. to teach them sign convention yes. according to the sign convention. Wait, wait. This is a graph. Which of the following graph represent velocity? Please apply the sign convention. So when you are throwing the ball vertically upward with some initial velocity, suppose you are throwing with hundred meter per second. After every one second, what change in velocity? Velocity, velocity, velocity. decreases by 10 meter per second. Yes. yes. So velocity is decreasing. And then velocity, and then it reaches the highest point, the body velocity falls down. Increases. So when it is falling down, what will happen? Velocity increases. Velocity, velocity, increases. Uh, velocity increases. But what is the direction of velocity vector now? Opposite direction. Opposite direction. Opposite direction. Okay. Downward. 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 So my confusion is between the children will, <coughs> will have confusion between which two graphs. Which two graphs they will have A confusion in selecting? A and, A and B. A and B. A and B. So A, and B. A graph velocity decreases and then velocity increases. increases. Speed decreases, speed increases. So if it is a speed time graph, this is fine. But it is a velocity time graph. So here, throwing up, throwing up, upward direction, if I take it as positive, downward direction, it is negative. Fall, thrown up, reaches the highest point, and then it is falling down. This is falling down. D is equal to zero here. Okay. So this one is positive. This is negative. Velocity is negative, though it is increasing. So this should be the correct graph. D, D is the correct graph. Please throw open lots of questions like this in order to get clarity. Students have clarity in sign convention and then the way the velocity is increasing, velocity is decreasing. So they have to visualize. So unless you throw them or unless you expose them to different type of questions, they, they may not think. An object is thrown upward. Then the displacement time graph for the motion is as shown. So definitely, 
when the object is thrown vertically upward it is acted upon by acceleration due to gravity so when it is thrown upward it is a slowing down process velocity will in decrease and finally it becomes zero displacement velocity becomes zero but it is a displacement time graph so immediately the child will have uh, would have related suppose if you are giving this problem and they are they are somehow used to this problem immediately what will be the tendency of the child just by just they will get carried away by the shape of the graph there is a tendency that the child may answer this isn't it yes or no yes ma'am yes. Yes. yes but it is a displacement time graph so during the see it is a decelerated motion upward journey is decelerated motion downward journey is accelerated motion so which graph Yeah. This graph. E. So we already seen, is it? It. Yes. This is a, a for acceleration. For uniformly acceleration, this is a graph, and uniformly deceleration, this is a position time graph. So we'll go for the option B. B. Are you Projectile convinced? Projectile type of motion. Na? Yes. Projectile type of motion. Na? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. Not a projectile. It appears as projectile. it is not a projectile project it is a vertical projectile you get it it's a vertical projectile and when you when we teach relative velocity how many of us related to graph do you draw graph to represent relative motion relative motion in in our um, one dimension we say that relative velocity of uh, a with respect to b With respect to B, will be B A minus. Am I correct? Relative velocity of A with respect to B is B A minus B B. So they are traveling in the same direction. Can I draw like this? And with the velocity is same. What is the relative velocity of A with respect to B represented by first graph? I am mm -hmm. representing motion of two object A and B. Uh, the x t graph is given. So, what is the relative velocity? Relative velocity is zero, ma'am. Relative velocity is zero. Why relative velocity is zero? They appear the same, ma'am. They are parallel. Yes. Their slope is the same, same so they have the same velocity. So, v a minus v b is zero. Is it? What will be the sign of this graph? Are they traveling in the same direction, a and b? Are they traveling in no, the same direction? There is a change of direction after crossing. No, they are traveling in the same direction. direction. Only thing is that a overtakes b. Overtakes. A overtakes b. They are traveling in the same direction. Same direction. Same, same. So as t increases, x is increasing, isn't it? As mm -hmm. time proceed, x is increasing. So actually, b uh, uh, a is starting mm -hmm. early, and also it is having greater speed. Early. A is uh, and b is starting. B is ahead of a. At t is equal to zero, b is ahead of a. At t is equal to zero, suppose if I take this as five, this is ten. Initial position, but they are meeting. Though b is ahead, since the velocity of a is more than b, they are meeting at t. At uh, at at t second, they are meeting. Later on, uh, the distance between a and b will increase. The distance between a and b will increase because a is far uh, having higher velocity. Higher velocity than b. So uh, a will go faster. A is faster than b. So the distance between a and b will increase. So now b a and b b. If you take no slope of a is positive, slope of b is negative. So definitely, are they traveling in the same direction or opposite direction? Opposite direction. They are traveling opposite in the direction. opposite direction. Opposite direction. So now you can see that the relative velocity will will be. More here, so V A is positive and V B is negative. Suppose if I take this as fifty meter per second and this as forty meter per second, fifty forty. V A is fifty meter per second. V B is forty meter per second. What is V A minus V B? T minus of minus minus ninety meters is ninety meter per second. so the velocity 
So can you uh, ask the children to give some example of this type of motion where they find the other person to be traveling faster than its intrinsic velocity? Immediately, they, you can uh, uh, give some example for this or ask the children train, to... Train, uh, train. train. Uh, so if you are traveling in a train, when another train is, tra uh, is flying in a parallel track opposite to your train direction, you feel as if your train is traveling faster, isn't it? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes. Suppose if you are traveling in a train, another train is... Uh, uh, train is also traveling along the direction of your train, you feel as if your train is slowed down. Because if you consider A as say 50 and B as 40, here the relative velocity of B A minus B B is only 10 meters, 10 meters per second. So all this, uh, you have to bring in uh, the children experiences when you are teaching relative velocity. This topic needs lots of explanation. So you need to give lots of illustration uh, for this relative velocity concept because uh, unless uh, we make them understand, uh, it's a difficult concept to comprehend. Do you agree with me or not? This is another topic which we need lots of uh, uh, illustrations and sharing. Uh, and one more point could I add on, ma'am? Yes, yes. Yeah. See, this relative velocity, like when we... Uh, Thing, as ma'am has written, VA minus VB we have written, isn't it? Like when you do the derivation, what we will understand in this relative velocity, especially one dimension as well as when we go on to two dimensions, what we need, what I feel according to us that the, the point that we have to drive home to the children is that relative velocity of one object with respect to the other is always the difference between the velocities. So ma'am has written no VA minus VB. So it the way you understand that minus sign is, it is the difference between the velocities. If they are in the same direction, then one velocity will be positive automatically, the other velocity. It is VA, the way I want, I mean, the way I want to tell it is, it is VA minus VB. Okay, are you getting me? It is VA vector minus VB vector. So if VA and VB vector are in the same direction, that is if the two objects are going in the same direction, then the difference will still remain as VA minus VB. Are you getting me, uh, teachers? Yes, ma'am. Are you getting me? In case the objects are traveling in the opposite direction, in case they are traveling in the opposite VB. direction, still it is VA vector minus Minus of, vector, but minus then VB becomes minus because minus negative according to our yeah. convention. That's what sign so, convention uh, you have to incorporate here. So that is what you have to drive home. So you can make the children understand if we the, the basic thing is relate to velocity is defined as VA vector minus VB vector. That VB vector will be positive if it is in the same direction. So the whole velocity becomes VA minus VB. In case you are in the opposite direction, it becomes VA vector yes. plus VB vector. So that yes. one thing, if you can drive home, then I think it will be easier for the children. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, thank you, ma'am. One thing I want to tell you, uh, teachers. So most of the children are writing competitive examination. So of course, they are going to other institute, but uh, CBSE level itself, let us try to give them some extra edge so that they can comfortably understand whatever uh, question they uh, experience or they are uh, they are going to uh, answer in competitive exam. An NCRT exemplar problem are uh, too good to in order to uh, make them train or make them take the competitive exam uh, comfortably. So such type of questions, students should be exposed to such type of questions. Definitely it is our duty to make them understand or uh, so most of the children are not uh, see we, we our CSS uh, 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 NTA syllabus is in, uh, for NEET and JE is only NCRT. So uh, it's not that they have to go to separate institution to appear for the competitive exam. It's also our duty to take them to that platform. Uh, please do the NCRT exemplar problem. I hope you are doing 
so this is such a uh, one type of problem where i'm um, where uh, uh, i really like this problem so among the four graph there is only one graph for which average velocity over the time interval can vanish for vanish for suitably chosen p which one is this so average velocity average velocity is what is average velocity displacement total displacement by time so you can go by rejection the c and d can be rejected straight away isn't it so here uh, the direction is not changing the direction of motion is not changing here also the direction of motion is not changing and one more thing do you think that uh, if i give a graph like this students have a lot of confusion suppose if i draw a graph like this is the object moving in a curve maybe for teachers we know that the object is even if you plot a graph for uniformly accelerated motion a body which is falling freely you will you are going to get get a graph like this isn't it when a, when a ball is falling down okay when a ball is falling down you are going to get a graph like this it's a straight line graph it's just it's just straight line motion straight line motion but you get a parabolic graph so you should under make them understand that the way uh, the graph is graph appear does not tell about the nature of the path nature of the path it only tells up about the variation of x with respect to t which is x is equal to here in this case it is half a t square so x is proportional to t square so you get a parabolic graph this one you have to stress teachers do you do that do you do that to teachers students really get uh, carried away by the shape of the graph the shape of the graph is curved they say that it's traveling in the curved line no it's not it's not so so this is a plot of variation between two quantities and then um, according to the equation the graph is a parabola according to the data the equation will be a parabola so now i think uh, the option which option i have ruled out c and d what about a it is between a and b which option average velocity may become zero for what can vanish is it for b graph so here it is the velocity is positive here the velocity is negative so it can vanish your average velocity can vanish to zero and this is also interesting you are given one type of graph acceleration time graph and you have to draw a corresponding velocity time graph so acceleration is constant acceleration constant it is is velocity constant no velocity will increase then acceleration becomes zero acceleration becomes zero means what it is not velocity is constant velocity is constant then again acceleration is positive acceleration is positive so it is accelerate so which is a graph is it a is it c is it b or is it b velocity time graph please give such graphs to the children definitely you have to exercise their brain so that it becomes flexible when you give problem to the children no they are you are giving exercise to their brain just like just physical exercise uh, make our body flexible make, make our muscle flexible problems make our brain function very flexible so if you expose them to lot of problems definitely they are they uh, they are thinking will become flexible they can uh, react to new situation or new problems so you have to expose them to different situation different problems so acceleration i think b is a correct graph a acceleration is here acceleration is here so accelerate when when a body is continuously accelerated its velocity is going to increase definitely it is not so and acceleration is constant it cannot be a curved graph velocity is can you can easily rule out c e yeah b is the correct option it cannot be d it cannot be d velocity is not becoming zero in this part acceleration is zero means velocity is constant velocity, velocity is not zero and again so this one maybe the child will have confusion between this two 
but here he should understand he or she should understand that acceleration is zero doesn't mean that velocity, velocity is zero velocity is constant yes. the way you could go about teaching this is you already thought as ma'am showed earlier the individual graphs if the acceleration time graph is a line parallel to the time axis what would be the velocity so you can divide graph? divide so can, this into three regions yeah you can divide it into three different parts and 1 2 3 recall exactly make them recall so the acceleration graph time graph i know it is uh, yeah i am drawing as madam is telling i am drawing a um, graph here velocity time graph for this region so this is t1 maybe t1 and t2 t2 after acquiring this velocity acceleration becomes zero so velocity is constant then again acceleration is applied up to t t1 to t2 so a very good idea as uh, radha ma'am said so t1 divide the time to t1 t2 from t1 to t2 acceleration is constant so velocity acceleration is zero so velocity is constant from t2 to t3 what happens again acceleration is applied so velocity will increase so very good idea by radha ma'am so you can divide so you, you can start break the motion into three region and for different time interval plot the graph and arrive at the conclusion thank you ma'am shall we proceed to the next slide yes ma'am so you can also uh, compare the see another application of graph is you can compare the motion of two object so you can ask you can give two sets of data you can give two sets of data of two object and ask them to plot as them to plot so what are the different inferences they get from the graph what are the different inferences they can get from the graph their velocities they can calculate the velocity they can compare the they can compare the velocities which is faster which is slower initial uh, uh, initial position are they starting from the same point no at what Where time instant they, are they uh... meet where they are at what time they are meeting at t is equal to 15 second they are meeting and who is ahead of so here uh, b was ahead and t is after t is equal to 15 second <clears throat> they yeah uh, meet still b is ahead intersection still b is ahead yes so similarly you can give um you can give a velocity time graph of two object compare the motion they can find out the uh, acceleration of the object they can find out from velocity time graph they can find the distance travel in a particular time interval okay so um derivations how do you uh, derive how, how to teach derivation to the children how to teach uh, say for example equation of motion how to teach them equation of motion it's given in the syllabus uh, by graphical method and also graphical method graphical method so suppose if you want to derive this equation just give an illustration you can uh, you can use a position time graph to uh, yeah you it. can give you can differentiate that but uh, uh, you have to make the children imagine a situation and arrive at logical conclusion for example uh, all these are for um, uniformly accelerated motion in a straight line so imagine that an object is having some initial velocity say 3 meter per second and whenever you define acceleration it is change in velocity per unit time so if i tell the acceleration is say 2 meter per second square please write it as 2 meter per second per second so after every one second the body the object gain a velocity of 2 meter, two per, meter second. per second so now after one second its velocity will be 3 plus so for every one second it is going to gain a velocity of what 
two meter per second, two into one. So after two second, after two second, this is after one second. After it is at t is equal to zero. It's in an initial velocity, at t is equal to zero. After two second, it is three plus two into two. So this is five meter per second. So here it is seven meter per second after three. So here I can get the formula. Get the formula. What is two here? A and t is the instant of time, and this is u. So can I not write b? At t is u plus a t. So there is no need for graph. There is no need to find out. So what do you uh, what we usually uh, maybe you may use different method. So we write the formula. Let me give the formula for acceleration to be v minus u is equal to by t is equal to a. Then v minus u is equal to a t. So v is equal to u plus a. u plus a t. We give this. Is it not this method a better method? Yes, ma'am. So, what the what are the takeaway from the children? So, acceleration increase the velocity. So, if I tell a is equal to two meter per second square, if I tell two meter per second per second for every one second the velocity increases by a factor of two meter per second. So, just tell after one second what happens. After two second what happens? So, generate a formula. So, from the data we are generating the formula. Uh, once you uh, ignite a fire in the children, no other things they will understand it easily. You can go by any method. So initially, when you introduce a derivation, do something like this. So in order that the concept is concept is clearly uh, some uh, uh, interesting the interesting thing you tell, some illustration, some some different way of uh, explaining. So all this either see because the syllabus is given us. Uh, graphical method, you can go by this or by usual method. And this graph I liked. Why is that? Uh, projectile motion is motion in two dimensions. So you can give such graphs where uh, it is not a three dimensional motion. It's not a three dimensional, though the ball is in thrown in air, it's a two dimensional motion. It's y coordinate and x coordinate will be changing. So some of the examples of, see projectile motion, usually we uh, teach um, horizontal projectile and oblique projectile. Mm -hmm. There are also different types of projectile. So students are very much interested in sports. So they may ask, they may wonder if you only give the horizontal and vertical projectile, they may wonder what type of uh, projectile motion is this? Object thrown from the height, no? This is also a projectile motion. It's also a projectile motion. So ask them to give different example of projectile motion, or uh, so so that they may not fix their mind uh, mind that all the projectile motion can be classified as horizontal and oblique projectile. So also projectile motion. So this is a oblique projectile. So horizontal projectile. Give them lots of illustration. You you need not even give. Ask them to give. Ask the students to find out. Let them give lots of illustrations. And this, uh, you just be, just note the uh, arrow marks, arrow, uh, vertical, vertical component. It's a beautiful uh, GIF. See here, the horizontal velocity is constant, isn't it? Projectile motion, what is the important characteristic of projectile motion? What is the important characteristic you have to stress upon in projectile motion? X component along the, only the vertical component changes, ma'am. X component remains as a constant. That is a physical independence of, of motion. motion. So the velocity, X component of velocity is not affected by gravity. Whatever is force it? acting along the y direction. Acceleration is zero along x axis. Ah, very good. Acceleration is zero along x axis. Yeah. So, till from the point of projection till it reaches the ground, the velocity along x axis is not at all changing. And the x, the initial velocity along x axis is not going to affect the y component of velocity. 
same thing uh, we get is applicable in uh, first chapter ma'am fields yes. and uh, charges there is one sound yes, yes. where the charge particle is projected in between two plates we can bring if they understand this well uh, yeah yeah yes uh, in our third chapter they will understand that component better that's component. why see the arrow mark see if you can uh, if you see this the velocity is increasing when the uh, during the downward trend the y, y component of the velocity the result and velocity length of the vector the length of the vector is going on decreasing and it is only x component present and then the length of the vector is going on increasing because the uh, y component the g g influence also, of g because yes, of the influence and also of and it also beautifully explains when it is reaching the highest point mm -hmm. you now when you show such gifs and when you show the such explanations at the highest point generally when we ask the question what is the velocity at the highest point of a projectile they tend to write it zero because mm. they don't understand the horizontal velocity still exists of course horizontal theta. velocity never becomes zero becomes zero that's why it it's still the arrow there. the blue arrow the length, uh, the arrow length is so same think, you know, it is unaltered exactly and uh, they should understand Vx. and also sometimes the questions are there in this projectile motion if the kinetic energy at the beginning mm. is this much what is the kinetic energy at the highest point so generally what children do is like you know they immediately like you know they don't understand this is a, a two dimensional motion and the horizontal velocity is always existent or it is always present yes. so what they do is they generally go right kinetic energy is zero at the highest point those are the wrong concepts that they pick up that so we have to make them understand you have to make them if you draw and, such uh, diagrams beautiful and i usually demonstrate uh this projectile motion with the help of a syringe do you do that we can with the help of a syringe fill with water syringes empty the syringe and you can take a bigger syringe needle remove the needle you can also have the needle after filling it and then you can uh, alter the inclination you, you know that uh, the range is maximum at 45 you can increase the you can change the angle of inclination and uh, you can find the range for different angle of inclination this experiment experiment can be performed both for uh, vertical projectile as well as horizontal projectile uh, this is what uh, uh, very very important the horizontal and vertical component of two dimensional motion are independent of each other any motion in the horizontal direction does not affect motion in the vertical direction and vice versa this this has to be um, imprinted in the brain of the children and see here Uh, if you have two uh, balls one is falling vertically downwards from this one just fall vertically downward another is given a horizontal velocity so now if you compare the motion of the ball which is falling vertically down and after every instant of time the green ball gives a position see the vertical position is the same the vertical position is the same so the vertical height the vertical height so you have to divide the motion into two horizontal motion and vertical motion so vertical motion is only governed by g horizontal motion is governed by u that u remain the same every time it is only u whereas it is gt you know that it is gt because u y is zero u x is u so now this as time increases see the velocity go on increases and after regular interval of time the height also remain the same so since you cannot differentiate between the vertical motion of a ball which is just falling down and which is a projectile the vertical motion is the same and both the ball will reach the at the same time suppose 5 second at t is equal to 5 second this ball is reaching the ground the ball which is vertically falling and which is instant which is uh, simultaneously dropped as with the blue ball both of them will reach the ground at the same time so this one uh, has to be uh, this one to be stressed